if you remember web swinging from the sky, saving the world's stupidest NPCs, and throwing family sedans at the Green Goblin, then you grew up playing Spider-Man the movie, the game. The year was 2002, and after decades of stalled development, the world's most popular superhero was finally given a live-action adaptation. Sorry, but the Japanese Spider-Man doesn't count, even if he does have a car and a Megazord. Spider-Man would go on to become the third highest grossing movie of that year. And of course, this being the early 2000s, a movie this big was ripe for a series of tie-in games, which we're going to compare in this video. Let's start with the one most of us grew up playing, the PlayStation 2, GameCube and PC version. The game begins with the most 2002 cutscene ever, the drum and bass beat itself makes me want to do some tricks on my scooter while burning a CDR. This game has a really memorable tutorial thanks to the snarky and witty narration from Bruce Campbell himself. Hey, king of the world, don't let it go to your head, okay? Array for you, you're swinging. The main story begins with a recap of the film's first act narrated by Tobey Maguire himself. The first level has Peter in his homemade outfit going after Uncle Ben's killer. And I remember the first time I hopped off the roof and began to web swing around the city, it felt so incredibly cool. Compared to the PlayStation 1 games, the city felt so real and huge. Look, it's the world famous Activision Tower. Sure, you're technically web swinging onto the sky, but who cares? Now, two decades later the controls do feel wonky. For example, pressing up and down on the analog stick is literally used to raise and lower Peter's altitude. Plus the camera kind of does whatever it wants. The combat is a bit better. Spidey's moves arsenal is loaded with a bunch of different combos which you can unlock as you progress through the game. Alright, let's try out the old mule kick. Oh sh**. I just threw him off the roof. Clearly Spider-Man doesn't have the same no kills policy as Batman. Now if you is based in New York, can you please confirm if every rooftop in the city is populated by generic goons? Circus in town? Peter then infiltrates the warehouse and takes out the bad guys. Come on, who wants some? I've got a fire extinguisher still in the box and I'm not afraid to use it. I do love all the random sh** you can pick up in this game. From tires to propane tanks to boom boxes. Is this like a say anything reference? Now the wonky camera controls meant that you would just start webbing people from the ceiling and hope that you at least got a couple of them by the time you go down. I did always found these early levels to be pretty tough. Spidey doesn't have any of the really good combos yet. Plus many of these goons have guns. And when you're not being absolutely riddled with bullets, you spend a lot of time backtracking through identical gray corridors and gigantic air vents. Plus, if you die, you've got to go right back to the start of the entire level. Then again, they're not the brightest bunch, are they? What's that? And so you eventually track down Uncle Ben's killer. And I like the way he just decides to moonwalk out the window while Peter has his Shakespearean monologue. Dude, he wasn't even threatening you. The next level picks up sometime later in the story. Peter now has his classic outfit, so it's time for some good old web swinging. I'm so used to modern Spider-Man games that I completely forgot that the New York in this game isn't actually open world. Every now and then you get one of these web swinging levels, which is actually quite small. And if you go out of bounds, the game makes you turn around. Plus, Spider-Man can't go down to street level, well, at least without dying. The next level takes place at Grand Central Station and it has you running around saving civilians and cops from Shocker's goons. Alright, they're here, so oh, come on, don't just stand there, at least punch back. It's nice to see Peter's trademark wit is very much still alive in this game. So you must be Quilt Man. Ladies and gentlemen, I give you the dumbest NPC in all of video gaming. Look, Shocker shoots a huge blast at the pillar and this guy's just on his phone completely oblivious. Come on, move! All right, fine. Ah, help! What's going on? You really ought to pay more attention. Wait, what? Look, you don't actually have to put the guy down. You can keep holding him while the bad guys punch you and him. Having fun yet? The next level has you chase Shocker through the sewers. I did like that you could jump on the enemy's shoulders and just punch them while they run around in panic. Nice touch. This set of levels finishes with Spider-Man chasing Shocker through the subway. And this damn level, playing it as a kid, I could never get my webbing right, so I'd always end up getting blasted to smithereens. We then move on to the Vulture and start by climbing his tower. And this bit always reminded me of the 
stair climb from the original Metal Gear Solid. This is followed by a teenager chasing a pensioner through the New York skyline. Every now and then the Vulture will do some horrible things that Peter has to repair. Also, why did they make him sound like the Scoutmaster from The Simpsons? You're too persistent, web slicker. Don't be afraid to use your nails, boys. <laughs> and of course, this part ends with Spider-Man beating up the old man on the rooftop. Next up, Scorpion, and in an interesting twist, the section actually starts with you having to work together with the villain to fight these Oscorp spiders. Oh cool, you can just pick up this 4x4 and... Oh, okay, well, they have insurance, right? Eventually, Spidey does have to take on the Scorpion, and look, we're back at Grand Central Station. Now, growing up, I was a huge fan of Spider-Man, mainly thanks to the 90s series where everybody looked like they were on steroids. Now, I actually got this game before I saw the movie, and the amount of different villains absolutely blew my mind. I went into the cinema fully expecting to see a six-hour movie with all of these villains and storylines. I wasn't a very bright child. And speaking of the movie, the game does eventually get to the Green Goblin storyline. Norman Osborn and Al from Al's Toy Barn use the serum with devastating consequences. We then cut to the parade, where Peter takes some creepy shots of MJ, the Green Goblin arrives, and suddenly Mary Jane finds herself on top of a big balloon. Alright, there she is, be cool Peter. Hey there beautiful, need a hand? Nice. Wait, what? MJ died? Oh, I guess you're supposed to save her life, not just flirt with her. Also, I like that the Green Goblin is just circling around you this entire time. You've got no chat, Spider-Man! And every now and then he will just clip through the balloon. The next level alternates between you battling the Goblin in the air and taking him on bare knuckle inside a few of these buildings. This is followed by a level where you have to fight 50 golden snitches. Wow, the camera really does have a mind of its own in this one. Alright, time for the most annoying part of the game, the espionage at Oscorp. Alright, time to hack this PC with a huge CRT screen. Oh no. Oh no. What the hell just happened? One second it's all quiet, and then a bunch of Terminators crawl out of nowhere and shoot me with lasers. This level was a major pain in the ass. There's no minimap, so you're forced to just crawl around the ceiling trying to find these passwords. Okay, there's gotta be one in this room. Oh no, the Terminators are having a board meeting. We then get another sneaking level, this one with lasers. Plus you've gotta keep going back and forth between these rooms to get these vats. Okay, that's one down. I really hope there's no guards outside this door. It's Spider-Man! Spider-Man then runs into a giant mech. You destroy the generators and then blow it up. Oh, I really hope nobody heard that. Oh no, an army of robots! I guess they did here. And why do these robots sound like Robo-Puppy? Find the intruder and neutralize with extreme prejudice. Robo-Puppy preparing to lick cheek. Oh yes, and of course it's time for some patented licensed game backtracking. God, these controls. He just keeps latching onto every surface instead of running in a straight line. Okay, okay, back to the main plot. Mary Jane comes back home after a long day of buying groceries. Oh no, it's the Green Goblin. Wait. How did he fit the glider in the corridor? Spidey goes after the goblin, saves Mary Jane, and then engages Norman Osborn in one final battle. Oh god, he's after me. Where are my car keys? Ah, the hell of it. I'll just throw it at him. And this game has a slightly different take on the movie's ending. They couldn't be bothered with the graveyard, so Norman gets hit by his own glider right there on the bridge in front of the entire city. Mary Jane then spawns out of nowhere and kisses Peter, with the mask still on, while Norman's corpse just lays there. Yeah, that's my life. Incredible. Now, this game also had a bunch of unlockables, the best one being the ability to replay the game as the Green Goblin. Well, technically, it's supposed to be Harry Osborn in the Green Goblin suit. Are you crazy? Do you just gallivant from rooftop to rooftop? Yes! Okay, moving on to the Xbox version, which is very similar to the other consoles. However, this one also had two levels featuring Kraven the Hunter, who's hired by Norman Osborn to take down Spider-Man. Kraven lures Spider-Man into the museum with a makeshift bat signal. Peter is shocked to realize the hunters transform the museum into a crash bandicoot level. Hold on, is this a museum or a zoo? Are these all supposed to be taxidermied animals? Or did the developers just forget to animate them and decided to call this a museum? Anyway, this level is followed by a boss battle against Craven. Now, apart from being poisoned, it's a pretty standard boss battle. Just try not to fall into the pit. Oh no, snakes! And this time, the developers actually remembered to animate them. And so, that 
that's it for the console version, but there was also a handheld port released for the Game Boy Advance. We begin with this deep fried clip from the movie, and then we get into your typical 2D side scrolling beat em up. Spidey can run, crawl, and swing around the levels, plus, there are a few power ups that you can collect throughout the game. This version also leans a lot more into the comic book aesthetic. The first level has you rescuing hostages from bad guys. Wait, how did this nun get on the rooftop? Boy, these thugs aren't messing around. Some will just throw molotovs at you while others will shoot you at point blank range with a shotgun. Now the secret is to get really close and that way for some reason they can't reach you. Look at this guy. Well, I'm all out of ideas. The next level has Spidey try to escape this building before it collapses. And I remember the sheer anxiety I felt as a kid trying to make it past these men in black types and seeing the floor above me collapse. Spider-Man then takes on the Vulture. There is also a web swinging mini game where you have to keep spamming A, otherwise Spidey will just drop out of the air. The next level has you looking for these toxic barrels while taking on the members of Right Said Fred. We then take on Kraven in a battle over the light switch. He gets a bit shy, you see. This is followed by three shocker levels that are kind of similar to the console version. There's one where you have to avoid the subway, then one of the station saving hostages, and then an actual boss fight. There is a parade level where you have to disarm more bombs, this time scattered across all of these balloons, followed by a showdown with the Green Goblin. And he's not too bright either, half the time he'll just fly straight into your fist. Spidey then finds himself in the Chinatown underground, taking on the Scorpion who just can't stop doing the choo-choo train. Just like in the console version, Peter then infiltrates Oscorp, only this time the floor is literally made of lava, half the walls are electrocuted, and there are loose power cables just hanging all over the place. Jeez, talk about poor working conditions. You also get these guards who are dressed exactly like the campers from Pokemon. Look at him getting shot by his own security system. How ironic. And the level ends with Spider-Man taking on a giant mech spider. Sure, why not? Osborn then gets Craven to kidnap Mary Jane and take her to Coney Island where, surprise, you've got to disarm more bombs. Once again, viewers who live in New York, is it really true that Coney Island is filled with clowns on unicycles juggling chainsaws. We get another Craven fight, followed by the final showdown with the Green Goblin. This time he gets hit by the glider and falls off the bridge. Mary Jane is as tone deaf as she is in the console version, she turns up and asks Peter for another date. And so there we have it, every version of Spider-Man, the movie, the game. Looking back to it now, the console version hasn't aged particularly well, mainly due to the camera and controls, which I kind of remember being an issue back when the game first came out. That being said, what 2002 Spider-Man lacked in polish and gameplay, it definitely made up for in ambition. Expanding the movie's plot to include some of the series' most memorable villains. Plus, this was Spider-Man's first outing on the sixth generation of consoles, and this game would go on to lay the groundwork for the beloved sequel and future games to come. But that's a topic for other videos. In the meantime, please let me know your memories of the 2002 game in the comments below. As always, thanks for watching please consider supporting me on Patreon, and a big thanks to all of my existing patrons. Also, if you've enjoyed this video, please like, subscribe, and hit the bell. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.